Most of you guys probably learned how to configure Cisco routers many years ago the same way I did, via CLI. But in today's web-based world this is no longer state of the art. This is why Cisco put a lot of effort into building a new nice GUI, which is very easy to use and also powerful enough to configure the router for the most complex scenarios. We already had the Secure Device Manager for almost two decades, but you can clearly tell the age of this tool at first sight. Many years later we came out with Cisco Configuration Professional Express, in short CCP Express. This is a great tool and already used by many customers. Very recently we have made some exciting enhancements in CCP Express version 3.2 which allows viewers to configure the router via smart wizards and also have an easy to use dashboard that can even show you details about the traffic that's going through the router. In the next few minutes I'll show you a quick demo of one of these wizards and afterwards our new AVC visualization interface. For security reasons you are asked to specify a new username and password when you open CCP Express for the first time on a route with factory default configuration. My new username default is admin password c one c o one two three. And now I have to re-log in with the same. So let me just do that. Admin. And now we can get started. Once you're logged in, you have two options. First, the quick setup wizard. This allows you to configure the basic features required to establish connectivity. And second, the advanced setup. This allows you to configure any feature on the router. Let's check out the quick setup wizard first. Once the quick setup wizard is loaded, you are first presented with a few tips and tricks. We will go straight into configuring it. On the first page we have some basic settings, so I give it a host name. I like to just give it the PID name so I know it's which one I'm on. Uh, domain name. Doesn't really matter. Time zone. And we don't care about NTP for now. My WAN connection type, this is an Ethernet router, and I use Gigabit 8 as my primary Ethernet interface. I have a modem in front of it, so I don't need PPPoE. DNS and IPv4 is fine to get it via DHCP. Next, backup WAN. I actually do not have a backup WAN interface here. Otherwise, this will come up with any 4G interfaces and so on and so forth you can set up here as well. On the LAN side, you can configure a different subnet if you would like to, or a different VLAN as well. For my purposes here, the CCP DHCP default pool is fine. This is the 10 10 10 0 pool with a slash 25, so you have 126 hosts possible here. And you can see here it's going to be on VLAN 1. Now it shows us a summary of all the things that we configured. Basic features, primary WAN, no backup WAN, our LAN site, and any security stuff will come later on. If you like to see what the router actually will be configured with, you have a CLI preview option here. And this can show you the entire configuration that's applied to the router. Alright, let's do it. Yes. You have successfully configured the router. Yay! Now I have 30 seconds to decide between two options. First, test the WAN connectivity. This will engage a little script that tests the DNS and pings Cisco.com. The second option is go to dashboard. For now I'll go to the dashboard. I'll test the WAN connectivity later on manually. And here's the dashboard. Here we can see a lot of useful information. First of all, hardware health. In here we only have a hardware clock. This one is used to make sure the battery, uh, the clock keeps running if the router is unplugged, and that's okay. Next we have a couple of key performance indicators here. First, the CPU utilization. You can see it's right now at 6%, so it's almost unused. The CPU would go up if I use more features or if I pump more traffic through the router. When interfaces, I only have a primary interface configured right now, and that one is up, but there's no traffic going through. Flash memory is only used for stuff like iOS files or any other files I want to store on the router. Therefore, during normal operations, this number shouldn't change and it's not that relevant, to be honest. System memory is a bit more critical. This one would go up in utilization in case I add more features like advanced routing, like BGP, or stuff like net scaling. 
Um, next I have some device details here, like the host name, device type, the iOS version I'm running, system uptime, the system time that's locally here, and the last reason for reload, which I did myself. Interfaces, I can see here there's a couple of, there's in total one fast Ethernet interface that's unused right now. I have eight switch ports plus one routed port, and I only have two of these up right now, that's what I can see here, and there's just one VLAN configured which is up as well. Now let's test if the WAN connectivity is working. Because my home router doesn't support proxy up, I have to play one minor fix which I'll show you right now. I go to static routing and I tell it to not use GIG as an outgoing interface, but DHCP. Alright, now let's test if it works. I go to troubleshooting and I just do a ping to cisco.com and it's successful. So if we go back to the dashboard, I'll now see traffic going through the router. Yay! Now let's see if my DHCP configuration works, my net configuration works, and actually end devices can go to the internet as well. So I'm just going to open a new window, going to cisco.com, and it works. So yeah, end devices are online. Setting a basic connectivity with CCP Express was super easy as you just saw. Now let's see how hard it is to enable AVC and get some more details on what traffic is going through the router. To do that, I have to go to the AVC tab on the dashboard. Here I click Enable AVC, select my WAN interface, I just drag and drop it here, and hit OK. Now it's going to go to the router and configure AVC on Gigabit 8, so it will take a while to configure it. That's why it's in loading for now. And a few seconds later the dashboard opens and shows what traffic is currently going through the router. As there's not much going on right now, I'll pause the recording for a moment and create some traffic. Alright, so I was browsing around a bit, enabled some YouTube streams, some Amazon Prime video, some Dropbox uploading and downloading, and you can see here, in total we now found 26 applications going through the router. And traffic-wise we have a bunch from YouTube here, 35%, some miscellaneous secure web, that's probably my Amazon Prime, some Dropbox uploading and downloading, some Facebook, some non-secured web, and about 27% is right now unclassified traffic. You can see the fullest of applications down here, and per application you can see how many features, uh, how much traffic was sent up and down. Alright, let's have a look at how this affects our router overall. So traffic-wise, I'm now pushing 700 kilobits per second through the interface, which is not that much, but you can see that in total my CPU is just used at 5% right now, even though I'm streaming several HD streams. Now to finish the AVC demonstration, let me just quickly show you how you could disable it in case you want to. You just go to Configuration, AVC Interfaces, Remove, Gig 8, press OK. And that's it. As one of the best Cisco instructors always said, I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.